President Trump met with Uzbekistan's reformist president Shavkat Mirziyoyev during what Uzbek officials called a historic visit. Before the talks, Trump referred to Mirziyoyev as a highly respected man in his country. We've been working very closely together on different things, including trade. They've actually made investments here. We make investments there.、Uh, we're working together from the standpoint of the military, including his purchase of equipment and military equipment from the United States. Mirziyoyev called Trump's economic accomplishments, like tax reform and job growth, outstanding. I agree 100 percent. The Uzbek leader also touted the two countries' decision to bolster economic and military ties. We have been procuring from the U.S. a lot of technology as well as the equipment. As I have already underscored, today has been a historical meeting, Mr. President. As part of this historic visit to the United States, we have been able to sign the contracts and agreements with the leading U.S. companies. Worth five billion. Mirziyoyev came to power 20 months ago, following longtime autocratic ruler Islam Karimov's death. Rights activists say the new Uzbek leader has moved his country toward more freedom. Uzbek Senator Sadiq Safoyev spoke to VOA's Uzbek service. We've seen today、uh, the changing image of Uzbekistan due to the. Democratic processes going on, the process in the, in in the country, and it's appreciated here in Washington. The Uzbek leader recently freed Faridin Tiliev, an opposition and human rights activist who had been in prison for more than four years in what activists said was a political motivated detention. Human Rights Watch Central Asia researcher Steve Swerdlo says, "Advances appear very real, but progress is needed." There have to be civil society activists who are independently、um, holding the government accountable to its promises and obligations. That means that we should see the registration and the accreditation of local NGOs that work on the most critical issues, from torture to political prisoners to freedom of speech. John Herbst is with the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Center and former U.S. ambassador to Uzbekistan. He spoke with VOA's Uzbek service. We, we can't talk about. Uzbekistan today, for example, as a truly、uh, open society or as a democracy, what we're seeing is a certain opening, a certain easing of some hardline policies, especially in the area of human rights and in the prisons system. Herbst says the U.S. appears to appreciate Uzbekistan's human rights advances. That may be helpful as the Central Asian nation seeks more American investment for the predominantly Muslim country of 32 million people. Peggy Chang, VOA News, the White House.